Congressman-elect Jim Hagedorn, well, until tomorrow when you're sworn in, and his dad, former Congressman Tom Hagedorn. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. That's a thank pleasure. You. Right, thank Jim. You. Jim, as I mentioned, uh, you're about to be sworn in tomorrow as part of the 116th Congress. You're stepping into a divided legislature during a government shutdown. So what are you being told from your soon-to-be colleagues, your relationships in Washington, D.C., about the shutdown battle and what you're going to face when you take your seat in the House of Representatives? Well, we have a divided government. You know, the, the Democrats are going to control the House, the Republicans have the Senate, and we have President Trump and the, his administration going to negotiate, I suppose, with both sides. And the shutdown is 75 percent of the government still operating, but 25 percent isn't. And the, the battle is over whether or not we should secure the border and spend uh, government funds to do that. We have, finally have a president that wants to get that job done. I support him on that, and I would hope that the Democrats would compromise and, uh, and join us. I mean, we're talking about 0.66% of the defense budget. I think we can spend that in order to secure our borders and defend our people. Well, Nancy Pelosi, the incoming speaker, weighed in on the shutdown on day one of 2019. Here is what she tweeted. Quote, real Donald Trump, Donald Trump, has given Democrats a great opportunity to show how we will govern responsibly and quickly pass our plan to end the irresponsible hashtag Trump shutdown. Just the first sign of things to come in our new Democratic majority, committed to working, hashtag for the people. And there was some breaking news today that the Democrats are going to float a plan to end the shutdown. It'll provide $1.3 billion for border security, but absolutely no wall. Nancy Pelosi has gone as far as to call a wall unnecessary and immoral, which I think is personally think is ridiculous. And anyway, though, Congressman uh, Jim Hagedorn, what type of uphill battle do you think you're going to face as a freshman entering a house managed by Nancy Pelosi? Well, we'll have to wait and see how she uh, wields her power, but uh, so far it doesn't look too good based upon the tweet and the other things that you just uh, recounted. All, all I can say is that we, we just had an election in our district, and I ran very strongly supporting the country, defending the country, having secure borders, a merit-based system of immigration. That's what I support. You know, the president is negotiating with the, the future Speaker of the House and the majority leader of the Senate, so I leave it up to him. I'm not going to get in the middle of those negotiations, but, uh, you know, I'm supportive of what we have to do in order to defend America and protect the United States citizens. Tom, you served under three different presidential administrations during your time in Congress, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and then Ronald Reagan. So you've got a wealth of experience in dealing with different personalities, different political platforms. In your opinion, sir, what should the president be saying to congressional leaders when he meets with them today? If you were in that room as a Republican, what would you have liked to have heard from the president or like to hear from the president? Uh, thank you. I, I think President Trump has it exactly right to stand firm in his position of securing our nation's borders, uh, adding additional forces on the border for the protection of the American people. And the notion that we allow these people to cross our border illegally, penetrate our societies at the deepest levels through, throughout the country, and in so many very sad and unfortunate instances, uh, cause carnage, murder, rape, and in too many instances, not in comparison to the numbers that come, but any is too many, in my opinion, because we have enough problems at times with our legitimate U.S. citizens. And to find that we're allowing these illegals to cross in and create this uh, cost to our society and human toll, as well as the financial cost for medical and education and uh, all the uh, food stamps and all the additional social benefits that they attach themselves to. And in my opinion, it, it, President Trump just has to stay for, firm, and if you have to shut the government down, shut it down. If the Democrats think it's more important to bring in illegals than it is to protect the American citizens, we, he needs to drive that point home every day until they come to recognize and the American people send a message to them that enough is enough. Yeah, I mean, by, I'd, by, by part of it. I'd just like to add to that. Yeah, please, uh, Congressman, go ahead. Well, if I could, I mean, the United States of America is the most generous country in the world for legal immigration. We, we bring in over one million people every year. 
that's something that we should celebrate rather than to say it's it's deficient because it's quite it's quite something really that we bring in a million people legally and all we're saying is we have to have border security so when the system when somebody breaches that we deport them they stay away they don't come in we don't have drugs and things of that nature coming into the country but we should have a merit-based system of immigration right. where people are coming into the United States and we have a you know a, a sense that they're going to be able to contribute to society fill needed jobs and and become good Americans let me ask both of you a question because you both seem very happy with the way the president has handled the shutdown so far you both seem to feel that his fight for border security is the right thing for our nation one of the recent incidents that hits home for me, I began my career before media and law enforcement, was this young police officer, young police corporal in California, Corporal Raniel Singh, a legal immigrant, only ever wanted to be a police officer, came to the U.S., did it all right, was naturalized, not only became a police officer, was brought into the elite narcotics unit as a canine officer, gunned down, murdered on Christmas Day by an illegal alien. It should make every American's blood boil. But, Jim, why do you think Democrats and California Democrats have been dead silent? They have not said this young officer's name. Do you think the Democrats, your Democratic colleagues, don't realize that things like that do resonate with the American people? They're very upset that a legal immigrant police officer was killed by an illegal? Well, I, I think they, they try to do what they can for political purposes, and when it doesn't fit their narrative, they don't talk about it, unfortunately. But in this case, the fact that a police officer was killed in the line of duty, it doesn't matter, unfortunately, who, who, who perpetrated that act of murder. That's a horrible thing to happen. Right. It should never happen. But we could have avoided that had we had a, a system of legal immigration with secure borders where this illegal immigrant wouldn't have been in the country, and that situation could have been avoided. And that makes it doubly unfortunate and very sad and tragic. So, you know, the Democrats always say when we talk about things like this, oh, you're politicizing it. And any time the Democrats say you're politicizing something, it means that you're, you're telling people the truth and letting them know what's going on and why we have a problem that needs to be fixed. All right, Jim, you sat down recently for an article with our own White House correspondent, John Gizzi. You discussed Obamacare. You feel it needs to be repealed. Outside of dealing with this government shutdown and immigration, is repealing Obamacare still at the top of your legislative agenda? And what are some of the other issues that you'll be taking on when you take your seat in Congress? Yeah, well, I've, I've run pretty straightforwardly on, on four planks that we have to try to do when we're in Congress. And the first is to uh, keep America safe with secure borders and a strong military peace through strength. The second is to reform the government to keep the economy rolling, making us prosperous. We do that through regulatory reform and regulations from the federal government are hurting every sector of our economy. They need to be rolled back. Uh, Obamacare is a big problem, especially for farmers and small business people. And uh, that needs we need patient uh, driven health care, not this Obamacare. It's been a failure. It's driven costs up. And then things like energy independence, work for welfare, that's another way to, other ways to reform government to get the economy rolling, tax reform for individuals. Then we ran on uh, protecting our God-given rights, you know, the basic U.S. liberties in the Constitution. I'm a right to life person, a keep and bear arms person, uh, a right to religious freedom person, and I'll fight for that. And lastly, you know, we have a rural district in southern Minnesota we want to sustain agriculture and our rural way of life. It's very important for the people in the rural communities that we have a vibrant economy led by agriculture. So I'm somebody that wants to serve on the committee and do all we can to expand trade and, and, our, and our opportunities for farmers. All right, Tom, I have to ask you, you're a proud dad. You're in town to see Jim sworn into Congress tomorrow. We have about a minute left. Tom, bring us back to what it was like when you were first sworn into Congress and what you're feeling watching your son now take that same seat or a similar seat in Congress? Well, first, let me tell you, I'm very proud of Jim's accomplishments. It's been, a, I think, kind of a lifelong goal for him to serve in the area of public service. And, and uh, he is uh, focused on uh, being elected to the Congress and serving the people and uh, basically uh, representing our conservative philosophy and cause for so many people in our American uh, society. And so, I, of course, I'm extremely proud of, a, of an accomplishment like that. Um, I started uh, serving in 1975. It was the, what we called the election in the year of Watergate. And uh, it was, I was one of 17 Republicans out of, I believe, 94 new members of Congress. So uh, probably very similar. I'm not even sure we were as divided partisan-wise in 1975 as, as our country seems to be today. 
But I think, unfortunately, that so many people have just developed a hatred for our president because they think it's the end thing and the popular thing to do. And they forget to focus on the important, critical issues that our country uh, is, is depending on the, the Congress to address. And I think Jim hit the nail on the head there in several areas of exactly what we need to focus on and what our government needs to pay attention to and, and uh, solve the problems for the American people. So by and large, um, we're deeply divided. I don't know what it's going to take to bring the country together, but hopefully it's not another national calamity of a humongous order that once again unites us like 2011 did for a, a very tragic event, but at one time the country pulled together and supported each other. And I, I think we have to stop this partisan nonsense of defeating a personality rather than defeating bad ideas. And on, on ideas, I think the president is really uh, hitting on, on all eight cylinders, so to speak. And I hope he just continues to drive forward in the last two years of his first term. All right, Congressman-elect Jim Hagedorn and former Congressman Tom Hagedorn, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today. Enjoy your big day tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more breaking news coverage, exclusive interviews, and great videos, click over here to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And don't forget to download the free Newsmax TV app. Newsmax TV, it's real news for real people.